Hello, this is Mrs. Ridgeway. I am going to complete PowerPoint Chapter 2. If you would like to follow along with me, please turn to page PowerPoint Chapter 2, page 34. Take a look at page 34 and 35. We will be using animations and transitions. Page 36, applying transitions. Transitions are organized into three categories. There's the, the subtle, the exciting, and the dynamic content. Uh, the dynamic content transitions are a combination of the fade transition for the slide background and a different transition for the slide content. If uh, slides have the same background, it looks like the slide background stays in place and only the slide content changes. Inconsistent transitions can be distracting and detract from their message. So generally, it's a good idea to apply the same transition to all of the slides in the presentation. Teresa wants to add more interesting transitions between the slides. Well, I have opened uh, the PowerPoint to hospital file and I'm going to continue on page 36 number two it says on the ribbon click the transitions tab at the top in the transition to this slide group click reveal The transition previews as it will appear during the slideshow. Slide one, which is the title slide, appears, fades away, and then slide two fades in. The reveal transition is now selected in the gallery. In the pane containing the thumbnails, a star appears next to the slide two th thumbnail. If you missed the preview, you can see it again. In the preview group, in the preview click group, click the preview button. That's to the far left. The transition previews again. In the transition to this slide group, click the more button. The gallery opens listing all of the transitions. Click the push transition. preview shows slide two side slide up from the bottom and then it push slide one up and out of view most transitions have effects that you can modify for example the peel off transition can peel from the bottom left or from the bottom right corner and the wipe transition can wipe from any direction that you choose Page 37, we're going to modify the transition effect for slide two. In the transition to this slide group, click the effect option button, which is towards the right. The effects that you can modify for the push transition are listed on the menu. Click from right. The push transition previews again, but this time slide two slides from the right to push slide one left. The available effects change depending on the transition selected. Step three, in the transition to this slide group, click the shape transition. The transition previews with a brief view of slide one before slide two appears in the center of slide one and then it enlarges in a circular shape to fill the slide. Step four, click the effect options button. The effects that you can modify for the shape transition are listed. Click the out transition effect. The preview of the transition with this effect displays slide two in the center of slide one that grows in a rectangular shape to fill the slide. Finally, you can also change the duration of a transition. 
The duration is the length of time or the speed from the beginning to the end of that transition. To make, tra to make the transition faster, you would decrease the duration. To slow the transition down, you would increase the duration. The duration is measured in seconds. Page 38. We're going to change the duration of the transition and apply it to all of the slides. Step one, in the timing group, click the duration arrow, the duration up arrow twice to change the duration to 1.50 seconds. In the preview group, to the far left, click the preview button. The transition previews once more, a little more slowly than before. Right now, the transition is applied only to slide two. You want to apply it to all of the slides. Step three, in the timing group, click the apply to all button. In the pane containing the thumbnails, the star indicating that a transition is applied to the slide appears next to all of the slides in the presentation. You want to remove uh, the transition from slide one because that slide will be displayed on the screen as audience members enter the room where you will give your presentation. So step four, we're going to display slide one. And then in the transition to this slide group, click None. The shape transition is removed from slide one only. You'll notice that there is no star next to the thumbnail. You should view the transitions in slideshow view to make sure you like the final effect. So what I did was I went up to the quick access toolbar. I clicked the start from beginning button. Slide one appears in the slideshow view. Then I pressed the space bar to advance through the slideshow. The transitions look fine to me. End the presentation and then save your changes. Okay, so I ended it and I'm going to click on save. Applying animations. Um, animations add interest to a slideshow and they draw attention to the text or to an object being animated. For example, you can animate a slide title to fly in from the side or to spin around like a pinwheel to draw the, uh, the uh, audience's attention to that title. Animation effects are grouped into four types. Entrance, emphasis, exit, and motion paths. With entrance, text and objects do not appear on the slide until the animation occurs. This is one of the most commonly used animation types. The emphasis animations. This is where text and objects on the slide change in appearance or they or move. Exit animations, well these uh, this is where your text and objects leave the screen before the slideshow advances to the next slide. And then there's motion paths animations. The text and objects follow a path on the slide. You can animate any object on a slide, including pictures, shapes, and text boxes. Slide four contains two pictures. Teresa wants you to add 
an animation to the title text on this slide. Step one, I'm on page 39. Display slide four. And then click the animations tab on the ribbon. Because nothing is selected on the slide, the animations in the animation group are, are all gray. Click the state-of-the-art medical equipment title text. The animations in the animation group are green to indicate that they are now available. All of the animations currently visible in the animation group are entrance animations. In the animation group, click the fly in animation. The animation previews on the slide showing the title text fly in from the bottom. In the timing group, the start box displays on click. So take a look at the timing group over to the right side of the ribbon. And you'll see that it starts with on click, which indicates that this animation will occur when you advance the slide show by clicking the mouse or pressing your space bar or enter key. The animation sequence number one in the box to the left of the title text box indicates that this is the first animation that will occur on the slide when you advance the slide show. See the number one to the right of the words, or to the left of the word state. You can preview the animation again if you missed it. In the preview group, click the preview button. The animation previews again. Step five, in the animation group, click the more button. The animation gallery opens. The animation commands are listed by category, and in each category appears in a different color. At the bottom are four commands, each of which opens a dialog box listing all the effects in that category. We're going to try an emphasis animation. Page 40, step six, under the emphasis category, let's click the underline animation. The underline animation replaces the fly-in animation and the slide title is underlined in the preview. Let's preview one more time. The underline animation you applied to the slide title is an example of an emphasis animation you can apply only to text boxes. To focus the audience's attention on one photo at a time, you will apply an entrance animation to the photos so that they appear one at a time during the slideshow. To apply an entrance animation to a photo on, let's say, slide four, which you are looking at right now, we're going to click the picture on the right. In the animation group, click the More button. Notice that the emphasis section, six of the animations, including the underlined animation you just applied to the slide title, are gray, which means that they are not available for this object. These six animations are available only for text. Step three, in the entrance section at the top, Click the split, the split animation. The picture appears starting from the left and right edges. In the timing group, on click appears in the start box. Look up to the on your ribbon to the right. This indicating that this animation will occur when you advance the slide show. The animation sequence number to the left of the selected picture is Two, which indicates that this is the second animation that will occur on the slide when you advance the slide show. 
The first occurrence will be underlining state-of-the-art medical equipment, followed by the split animation for the picture to the right. Page 41, to change the effect and the duration of an animation. In the animation group, click the effect options just to the right of the more button for animations. The menu contains direction options. Click the vertical out. The preview shows the picture appearing starting from the center and building out to the left and right edges. Step three, in the timing group up on the ribbon, click the duration up arrow once. The duration changes from 0.50 seconds to 0.75 seconds. After you have applied and customized the animation for one object, you can use the animation painter to copy that animation to other objects. I believe this animation painter will be one of your multiple choice questions on the exam. So mark this page. To use the animation painter to copy the animation on slide four, we're going to click the photo on the right. In the advanced animation group, up on the ribbon, we're going to click the animation painter button. And then move the pointer onto the slide. The pointer changes to the animation painter pointer, which looks like a paintbrush. If you do not see a paintbrush, go up and click Animation Painter. Click the photo on the left. The split animation with the vertical out effect and the same duration of 0.75 seconds is copied to the photo on the left and the animation previews. After you apply animations, you should watch them in slideshow view to see what they will look like during a slide show. To view the animations on slide four in the slideshow view, make sure that uh, slide four is displayed. On the status bar, click the slide show button. When you click this button to start a slideshow, the slideshow starts from the current slide instead of from the beginning. Slide four appears in slideshow view. Only the title, the arrow shapes, and the footer appear on this slide. Press the space bar to advance the slideshow. The first animation, the emphasis animation that underlines the title occurs first. Press the space bar again. The photo on the right appears starting at the center of the photo and building out to the left and the right edges. Click anywhere on the screen The photo on the left appears with the same animation as the photo on the right. Press the escape key on your keyboard and slide four appears in normal view. Page 42, Teresa doesn't like the emphasis animation applied to the slide title. It's distracting because the photos are the focus of the slide, not the title. Also, she thinks it would be better if the photo on the left appeared before the photo on the right. Finally, Teresa wants the arrows to animate after each photo appears. To remove the title animation, animate the arrows and change the order of the animations. Look with me on page 42, step one. Click the state of the art 
medical equipment title text. In the animation group, the yellow emphasis animation underline is selected. In the animation group, click the more button. And then at the top of the gallery, click none. The animation that was applied to the title is removed. The animation sequence icon no longer appears next to the title text box, which was the number one. And the other two animation sequence icons on the slide are renumbered one and two rather than two and three. Next, we're going to apply animation to the two arrows. Apply the entrance wipe animation to the recently updated OR arrow and then change its effect option to from left. Okay, so I'm going to click on the arrow and I'm going to choose wipe. And then I'm going to change wipe effect option from left instead of from bottom. Apply the entrance wipe animation to the brand new MRI scanner arrow. And then change its effect option to from right. Now you need to select the animation applied to the photo on the left and change it so that it occurs first. You can select the object or the animation sequence icon to modify an animation. Next to the left picture, click the two animation sequence icon. In the animation group, the green split entrance animation is selected. Step six, in the timing group, click the move earlier button. This is going to reorder this photo. Notice that the two changes to a one. The animation sequence icon next to the photo on the left changes to the two, from two to one. And the animation sequence icon next to the photo on the right changes from the one to two. Now you need to reorder the animations so that the recently updated OR arrow animates after the picture on the left. So next to the recently updated OR arrow, click the three. And then in the timing group, click to move earlier. It changes from three to two. All right, so on page 43, in the preview group, click the preview button on the far left. The photo on the left appears, then the recently updated OR arrow, then the photo on the right appears, followed by the brand new MRI scanner arrow. When you apply an animation, the default is for the object to animate on click. If you look up in the ribbon, you'll see the start is on click. That is the default, which means when you advance through the slideshow, you can change this so that an animation happens automatically. 
either at the same time as another animation or when the slide transitions or after another animation or transition. Teresa wants the arrows to appear automatically after each photo without the presenter needing to advance that slideshow. So we're going to change how the animation for the arrows start. On slide four, click the recently updated OR arrow. The wipe entrance animation is selected in the animation group at the top. And in your timing group to the right, on click appears in the start box. In the timing group, click the start arrow. The menu lists three choices for starting an animation. On click, with previous, and after previous. Click the after previous. We want it to appear after the previous animation. Now this arrow will appear automatically after the photo. Step four, change the way the animation applied to the brand new MRI scanner. Arrow starts, change it to after previous. So I'm gonna click the brand new MRI scanner and I'm going to go up to the timing group and I'm going to choose after previous, which means it will appear after the picture appears on the slide. When you preview an animation, it plays automatically. Now let's view and test the animations. On the status bar, click the slideshow button to begin with slide four. Slide four appears in the slideshow view. Press the space bar. The photo on the left appears, followed by the arrow. Press space bar. The photo to the right appears, followed automatically by the space bar. Press escape. When you set an animation to occur automatically during the slideshow, it happens immediately after the previous action. You can add a pause before the animation so that there is time between automatic anima animations. To do this, you increase the time in the delay box in the timing group on your ribbon to the right. Like the duration time, delay times are measured in seconds. Give the audience time to look at the first photo before the second photo appears on slide four. We're going to add a delay to the animation that is applied to the photo on the right. Step one, I'm on page 44, step one. On slide four, click the brand new MRI scanner arrow if, you, if it's not already selected. In the timing group on the ribbon, you'll see 0, 0, 0.00 appears in the delay box. In the timing group, click the delay up arrow four times. Oop, but click the duration. I need to click delay. One, two, three, four. That changes the uh, to one second. After the photo on the right appears, which is the previous animation, the brand new MRI scanner arrow will appear after a delay of one second. Apply a one second delay to the animation applied to the recently updated OR arrow. On the status bar, click the slide show button. Slide four appears in slideshow view. Press the space bar. The photo on the left appears and then after a one second delay, 
the recently updated OR arrow appears. Press the space bar again, the photo on the right appears, and then after a one second delay, the brand new MRI scanner arrow appears. Press escape. If you animate a list, the default is for each of the first level items to animate. And it animates on click. If you'll look at the timing group on the ribbon, you'll see start. And uh, right now it's showing after previous. We set that for the slide four. This type of animation focuses your audience's attention on each item without the distraction of items that you haven't discussed yet. Teresa wants you to add an entrance animation to the bulleted list on slide two. She wants each first level bulleted item to appear on the slide one at a time so that the audience won't be able to read ahead while she is discussing each point. Display slide two. and then click anywhere in the bulleted list to make the text box appear. Okay, the text box is now active. On the animations tab at the top, in the animations group, click the fly in animation. The animation previews on the slide as the bulleted items fly in from the bottom. When the qualified and friendly staff item flies in, its sub items fly in with it. After the preview is finished, the numbers one through five appear next to the bulleted items. Notice that the sub items have the same animation sequence number as their first level items. This means that the uh, sub items are set to start with previous or after previous. Page 45, number three. Next to the qualified and friendly staff bulleted item, click the one animation sequence icon to select it and then in the timing group on the ribbon on click appears in the start box next to the sub item board certified veterinarians click the one animation with previous appears in your start box if you look up on your ribbon. If you wanted to change how the items in the list animate during the slideshow, you could change the start setting of each item or you could change the sequence effect. Sequence effects appear on the effect options menu that we used earlier. In addition to the direction options when you apply an animation to a text box. The default is um, for the items to appear by paragraph. This means each first level item animates one at a time with its sub items. You can change this setting so that the entire list animates at once as one object or so that each first level item animates at the same time, but as separate objects. We're going to examine the sequence options for the animated list. Click in the bulleted list, and then in the animation group, click the effect options. The sequence options appear at the bottom of the menu below the direction options and by paragraph is selected.
step two, page 46. Click as one object. Notice that the animation preview shows the entire text box flying in. After the preview, only one animation sequence icon appears next to the text box, indicating that the entire text box will animate as a single object. In the timing group on the ribbon, on click appears in the start box. Step three, in the animation group, click the effect options button. And then this time under sequence, click all at once. The animation previews again, but this time each of the first level items fly in as separate objects. Although they all fly in at the same time, visually there is not much of a difference between this option and the as one object option for the fly in animation. After the preview, animation sequence icons uh, all numbered one. They all appear next to each bulleted item, indicating that each item will animate separately, but you only need to advance the slide show once by pressing the space bar. Next to the first bulleted item, click the one animation. Okay, so I click the one animation sequence icon. In the timing group, you'll see that it shows on click in the start box. Step five, next to the second first level item, which is state-of-the-art facilities. Click the one animation. In the timing group, it's showing with previous. Step six, in the animation group, click the effect options, and then click by paragraph. the sequence effect changes back to its original setting. This is the default setting. Save your changes. Page 47, using the morph transition. The morph transition is a special transition that essentially combines a, a uh, transition with an animation. With the morph transition, you can move an object to a new location on a slide, change the size, the shape, and the color of an object, and you can zoom into or out from an object. When you use the morph transition, you might need to place objects in the area outside the actual slide. The area outside of the slide is part of the PowerPoint point workspace, but anything positioned in this area will not be visible in your slideshow or presenter view. To use the workspace, you may need to zoom out. We're going to drag objects off of slide five. So display slide five. You should now have the we treat all small animals slide showing on the screen. This slide contains four pictures. During the slideshow, each picture needs to appear in the center of the slide and then move out of the way to make space for the next picture. First, you will move all the pictures off of the slide to the workspace, and then you will zoom out to see more of the workspace. On your status bar, click the zoom out, which is the minus, not the plus, button. Click it as many times as needed to, to change your zoom percentage to 40%. Drag the first picture, which is the man sitting with several animals on him. Drag this picture to the left 
of the slide. Using the SMART guides to keep it aligned with the other pictures. Drag the next picture hands around a yellow bird off the slide and position it to the left of the first picture. Drag the next picture, a woman patting a bearded dragon, to the right of the slide. And then drag the last picture, a close up of a dog, to the right of the picture of the woman. This is the starting slide for the morph transition. The steps in this section instruct you to place the objects at very precise locations. The instructions are specific so that your final file matches the official solution file. You have created the starting slide for the morph, the morph transition. Next, you need to duplicate the slide and move and change at least one object. To duplicate slide five and to resize and reposition a photo on slide six, we're going to, first of all, step one, page 48, step one in the pane that contains the slide thumbnails, right click the slide five thumbnail. and then click Duplicate Slide. The new slide six is selected. To the left of slide six, click the picture of the man sitting with several birds on him, and then click the Picture Tools Format tab. Okay, the Format tab is at the very top. In the Size group, click in the Shape Height box. Type 4 and press Enter. Drag the picture of the man to the center of the slide so that the SMART guides show that it is centered both horizontally and vertically. Right there. Click the Transitions tab at the top and then in the transition to this slide group, click the morph transition. The morph transition is applied to slide six and the picture of the man sitting moves into the slide and resizes as the transition previews. Display slide five. And then on the status bar, click the slideshow button. Slide five appears in slideshow view. Press the space bar. Slide six appears and the picture of the seated men slides onto the slide and gets larger. Press Escape. The morph transition is, I believe this is pretty new as far as uh, Microsoft Office 2019. I don't recall using this in 2016. The morph transition made it look like you had applied both the fly-in animation and the zoom animation to the picture. 
Now that you have seen how the morph transition works, you will repeat the process until the final slide shows all the photos correctly positioned and sized. To complete the morph transition effect for the pictures originally on slide five, we're going to duplicate slide six. The new slide seven is selected. On the Transitions tab, the Morph Transition is selected, if you look up at the top on the ribbon. When you duplicated slide six, the transition was copied as well. On slide seven, change the height of the picture of the seated man to 3.2. Okay, so we're going to go up to picture format. Let's see, I've got to click on format 3.2. Drag the picture of the seated man to the lower right corner of the slide so that the SMART guides show that there is the same amount of space below the picture and above the title text box, and so that the right edge of the picture aligns with the right edge of the slide. To the right of the slide, change to the right of the slide, change the height of the picture of the woman patting the bearded drag dragon to four inches. And then drag the picture of the woman to the center of the slide. Duplicate slide seven. On the new slide eight, change the height of the picture of the woman to 2.3 inches. and then drag the picture to the left so that the SMART guides show that the center of the picture aligns with the top of the picture of the seated man. And so that there is the same amount of space between the right edge of the picture of the woman and the center of the slide as there is between the left edge of the picture of the seated man and the center of the slide. Okay, step. Seven, to the left of the slide, change the height of the picture of the yellow bird to four inches. And then drag the picture of the bird to the center of the slide.
duplicate slide eight. On the new slide nine, change the height of the picture of the bird to 2.1. and then drag it to approximately one quarter of an inch to the left of the seated man. So one smart guide shows that its bottom aligns with the bottom of the picture of the woman and another guide appears vertically through the center of the picture of the bird. This vertical smart guide is indicating that the center of the picture is aligned with the right edge of the text box containing the footer. To the right of the slide, change the height of the picture of the kitten, kitten and puppy. Change it to four inches. And then drag it to the center of the slide. Duplicate slide nine. On the new slide 10, change the height of the picture of the kitten and puppy to 3.5. and then position it to the left of the picture of the bird so that the middle of the picture of the kitten and puppy aligns with the bottom of the picture of the woman and so that there is the same amount of space between the picture of the kitten and puppy and the photos on either side of it. On the status bar, click the Fit Slide to Current Window button. Fit Slide to Current Window button. Okay, you see on the status bar, click the Fit Slide to Current Window button. It's on the far right. Compare your screen to figure 2-33. Okay, so let's make sure now I'm going to move this one up. And I'm going to move this one up. Okay, that looks close enough to me. Let's make sure this is even with the man. Yep. 
Now that you have created all the necessary slides, you can view the slides in slideshow view to see the effect of morph transition. To view slides 5 through 10 in slideshow view, display slide 5. Oh, let me fix this right here. She would have needed to be up here. All right, and then this one, if I move this one over some more. This one over. And move it up. This one up. Okay. Now I'm working this for the first time myself, so this is interesting. I want to make sure that I've got these all in the correct location. Okay, so now I'm going to click on, go up and click on. Slide five. Display slide five, and then on the status bar, click the slideshow button. Slide five appears in slideshow view. The pictures that you position to the left and right of the slide are not visible. In the lower right corner of the screen, the slide number five appears. Press the space bar. The picture of the seated man appears from the left, moves to the slide, and grows larger. In the lower right corner of the screen, the slide number changes to six. Press the space bar. The picture of the seated man shrinks and moves to the lower right corner of the slide while the picture of the woman appears from the right, it moves to the center of the slide and grows in size. Again, the slide number changes to seven. Press space bar. Three more times. That's one. Two. And three. The other two pictures move into the slide and are repositioned in their final locations. The changing slide numbers distract from the effect you are trying to create with the morph transition. Now I'm gonna go back by pressing this. I'm, I'm kind of curious. So there was slide seven, slide eight, slide nine, and it looks like I need to move slide nine over, or that bird picture. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to move the bird over. It looks like it needs to be moved over some. There, and then I'm going to move this one over. All right, move this one over. Right there. Okay, now I'm happy with my slideshow. Save. Press the escape key. Oh, if you're still in the uh, slideshow, press the escape key and then click the insert tab. Step six, in the text group. 
click the header and footer button. Click the slide number checkbox to deselect it. And then a, click apply to all. Now the changing slide number will not distract the viewer from the morph transition effect. We no longer have the um, slide number. You can also use the morph transition on slides that contain text. We're going to do that. We're going to apply the morph transition to slide two. To apply the morph transition to slide two, display slide one. The title text box contains the text, Windsor Veterinary Hospital. Step two, display slide two. The footer contains the same text as in the title text box on slide one. Look at your footer. On the ribbon, click the transitions tab and then click the morph transition. The morph transition is applied to slide two and previews. On the quick access toolbar, click the start from beginning button. Slide one appears in slide show view. Press the space bar. Slide two appears in slideshow view, and as it does, the title text from slide one moves down into the footer on slide two. Let me do that again. Oh, that's pretty cool. Press space bar. The first bulleted item flies onto the screen. Press escape. Adding and modifying videos. You can, you can add a video to slides to play during the presentation. PowerPoint supports various file formats, including the MPEG-4 format, the Windows Media Audio Video format, and the QuickTime movie format. After you insert a video, you can modify it by changing playback options. Um, you can, uh, by changing the length of time the video plays, you can also apply formats and styles to the video. Turn with me to page 52. Teresa gave you a video that she wants you to add to slide 11. The video shows a happy dog running towards the camera in slow motion. To add the video to slide 11 and play it, we're going to display slide 11. And then in the content play holder, which is over to the right, click the insert video button. The insert video window opens from, we're going to click from a file because it is in our file folder. The insert video dialog box opens. In PowerPoint module folder, we've got to navigate to the folder. So I'm going to home, uh, to my H drive, and I've got to go to PowerPoint, PowerPoint 2, module and we're going to choose running give it time to load into your uh, slide 
the video is inserting. It's inserted on the slide in place of the content placeholder. The first frame of the video is displayed. And a video toolbar with controls for playing the video appears below it. The video tools contextual tabs appear on the ribbon itself. If you look at the top, you'll see format and you'll also see the playback tab. Page 53, step four. On the video toolbar, click the play button. The play button changes to the pause button and the video plays. Watch the 11 second video. Note that this video does not have any sound. Click the video tools playback tab. That's at the very top, go up to the very top, playback. In the start box, in click sequence appears. Okay, I see it. Video options. Okay, the in click sequence appears. This means that the video will start playing during a slideshow when you advance the slideshow or when you click the video or the play button on the video toolbar. Okay, so next we're going to watch the video in slideshow view. On the status bar, click the slide show button. Slide 11 appears in slideshow view. Press the space bar. The video starts playing because you advanced the slide show. Before the video finishes playing, move the pointer to make it visible and then click the video. Before the video finishes playing, move the pointer to make it visible and then click the video. The video pauses. To stop the video from playing, you can click it, or you can move the pointer on top of the video and then click the pause button on the video toolbar. I just clicked the, the video itself. Because you already started playing the video once, if you advance the, the uh, slideshow, the next slide will appear. If you want to start the video playing again, you need to click it or click the play button on the video toolbar. Move the pointer on top of the video. The video toolbar appears. Okay, I'm going to have to move over to my other uh, screen. My other screen is showing it. You should be showing it on your screen. And so I place it and the the uh, video toolbar does appear and the pointer changes to the pointing finger. That's right. Click anywhere on the video. The video continues playing from the point it left off. Now I've got to press the space bar. The black slide that indicates the end of the slide shows, uh, sh the end of the slide show appears. Press the space bar again and we'll, and then you'll return to the normal view. Oh, I can start it here. Pause, start, pause. Page 54, uh, keeping your videos short and only showing necessary content helps to keep your audience focused. If a video is too long or if there are parts at the beginning or end of the video that you don't want to show during the presentation, uh, you can trim the video. Bottom of page 54, we're going to trim the video on slide 11. 
On slide 11, click the video to select it. Mine's already selected. And then click the video tools playback tab if it's necessary. Okay, I'm looking at the top and I have it already selected. In the editing group, click the trim video button. The trim video dialog box opens onto the screen. Drag the red stop tab to the left until the time in the end time box is approximately 9.5 seconds. Ooh, that's kind of hard to do. Okay, that's close. 9.512 seconds. If the number in the end time box is not 9.500, click the end time box. Ah, okay. Click after the last number. Edit the time so it is. That's good to know. Here we go. And then click OK. On the video toolbar, click the play button. The video plays from the beginning but stops playing after 9.5 seconds. The last 1.5 seconds of the video do not play. Save your changes. The frame that appears on the video object when the video is not playing is called the poster frame. The default poster frame for a video is um, the first frame of the video. You, you can select any frame from the video or any image stored in a file as the poster frame. If the video is set to rewind, the poster frame will reappear after playing. Teresa wants you to select a poster frame for the video on slide 11. To set a poster frame, first click on slide 11, which we're on already, and click the video to select it. And then click the Video Tools Format tab up at the top. Point to the toolbar below the video. A screen tip appears identifying the time of the video at that point. On the video toolbar, click at approximately the 8.00 second mark. The frame at the 8.00 second mark shows the dog in the center of the video object. Ooh, my hands are not steady enough, so that should do right there. You might not be able to click at exactly the 8.00 second mark. Click as close to it as you can. For example, 7.99 or 8.05.
in the adjust group up at the top on your ribbon click the poster frame button the poster frame menu will open and click current frame the message poster frame set appears in your video's play bar underneath the video and the frame currently visible in the video object is set as your poster frame. Step six, on the status bar, click the slideshow button. Slide 11 appears in the slide show view. The poster frame shows the dog in the center of the video object and mine is showing on my other screen. Yours will probably be on your screen. Click the video. The video plays. When it is finished, the video object shows the empty field that is at the end of the video. Press Escape. You can change several options for how a video plays. On page 57, if you look at figure 2-37, there's a listing of video options. Fade, duration, volume, start, play full screen, hide while not playing, loop until stopped, rewind after playing. Those are some of the video options, and it also shows the function of the video option. As you have seen, when you insert a video, it's start setting is set to in click sequence in click sequence for a video means that uh, the same thing that it means the same thing that on click means for animation anything you do to advance the slideshow causes the video to start you can modify the start setting so that the video plays automatically when the slide appears during the slideshow the start setting is on the video tools playback tab. I'm going to go up and click on the playback tab at the top. In addition to changing the start setting, you can set a video to fill the screen when it plays during the slideshow. You can also set a video to rewind so that it displays the poster frame after it plays. To modify the playback options of the video, we're on slide 11. Click the video to select it, which mine is already selected, and then click the Video Tools Playback tab at the top. In the Video Options group, in click sequence appears in the start box. In the Video Options group, Click the start arrow and then click automatically. Now the video will start automatically when the slide appears during the slideshow. Also in the video options group, click the play full screen checkbox to select it. Play full screen. The video will fill the, the screen while it plays. In the video options group, click the rewind after playing. Okay, so I clicked in the checkbox. The video will reset to the poster frame after it plays. Now, let's check this out. On the status bar, click the slideshow button. Slide 11 appears briefly in slideshow view, and then the video fills the screen and plays. After the video fin finishes playing, slide 11 reappears, and the poster frame appears in the video object, which is the dog in the center of the screen. Press Escape. This will end the slideshow, and then save your changes. 
when you insert a video or an audio object, two animations are automatically applied to the video or the audio object. The first animation is the play animation. The play animation is set to on click. This means that when you advance the slideshow, the video will start playing. The second animation is the pause animation. This animation has a special setting applied to it called a trigger so that you can click anywhere on the video to play it or unpause it and then click the video again to pause it. Both the play and pause animations are media animations. Page 59, to examine the media animations applied to the video, on slide 11, click the video to select it. if necessary, and then click the Animations tab. Because you set this video to start automatically, two animation sequence icons appear next to it. One containing a zero and one containing a lightning bolt. In the animation group, multiple is selected because two animations are applied to this video. Look at your ribbon and you will see multiple is selected. In the animation group, click the more button. The media category appears at the top of the animation gallery because a media object is selected. Press Escape. The gallery closes without you making a selection. With more than one animation, when more than one animation is applied to any object, you need to click each animation sequence icon to see which animation is associated with each icon. Click the zero animation. Okay, so I clicked the zero animation sequence icon. In the animation group, uh, at the very top, you'll see that play is selected. And in the timing group, over to the right, after previous appears in the start box. This start setting of the play animation was changed to, play, to after previous when you select it automatically in the start box on your playback tab. Now click the lightning bolt. By clicking the lightning bolt animation sequence icon, in the uh, look up and look in the animation group, the pause animation is selected. And in your timing group on the far right, on click appears in the start box. This animation is applied automatically to all videos when you add them to slides. It is because of this animation that you can click anywhere on the video object during a slideshow to pause or to play it. Page 60, click the Video Tools Playback tab. Well, first I need to click on the picture and then click or the video itself and then playback. In the video options group, click the start arrow. Click in click sequence. Click the animations tab. and then click the one animation sequence icon. In the animation group, play is selected, but now on click appears in the start window. Click the video and then click 
Video Tools Playback tab. In the Video Options group, click the Start arrow and click When Clicked On. And then click the Animations tab. There is only one animation applied to the video now. In the Animations group, Pause is selected. And if you look over in the um, Timing group, On Click appears in the Start box. Change the Start setting of the video back to Automatically. As with pictures, you can compress media files. You can compress videos using uh, the settings Full HD or HD or Standard. The Full HD 1080p compresses the video slightly, maintains the quality of your video. The HD 720p compresses the videos, quality suitable for streaming over the internet. Standard 480p compresses the video as small as possible. With all of the settings, any parts of videos that you trimmed off will be deleted, similar to deleting the cropped portions of the, the photos. After you compress media, you should watch the slides containing the videos using the equipment you will be using when you when um, giving your presentation to make sure the reduced quality is acceptable. If you decide that you don't like the compressed quality, you can undo the compression before you close the file. You will compress the media file you inserted. You need to send the presentation to Teresa by email, so you will compress the media as much as possible. To compress the video in the presentation, make sure you're on slide uh, 11 and that it is, it's displayed and then click the file tab. I'm going to click off of the video itself. I'm going to go to file. Backstage view appears displaying the info screen. Click the compress media. Okay, I'm going to click the compress media button. A menu opens listing compression choices. Click the standard 480p. The Compress Media dialog box opens, listing the video file in the presentation with a progress bar to show you the progress of the compression. After the file is compressed, a message appears in the status column indicating that compression for the file is complete and stating how much the video file size was reduced. As you can see, compression completed and we saved 1.3. Okay. All right, so a message also, okay, so we saved in 1.3 megabytes. A message also appears at the bottom of the dialog box stating that the compression is complete and indicating how much the file size of the presentation was reduced. Okay, complete. Okay, I see that. Because there is only one video in this presentation, the amount the video was reduced and the amount of the presentation was reduced, uh, those are the same. I see the 1.3 megabytes saved. Compression also 1.3 megabytes saved. Click close. Next, the compression media button on the info screen. Okay, let's see here. 
it says to click close next to the compress. Oh, okay, I see it. We clicked it. The bulleted list lists the total size of the media files in the presentation. I see that under properties. States that the presentation's media was compressed to standard 480p and that you can undo the compression if the results are unsatisfactory. Now you need to view the compressed videos. At the top of the navigation bar, we need to go back to display slide 11. On the status bar, click the slide show. to display the slide in slide show view, and then watch the video. The quality is lower, but it is sufficient for Teresa to get the general idea after you send the presentation to her by email. Press escape, display slide one, Add your name as the subtitle and then save your changes. Now, view the completed presentation as a slideshow. To view the completed presentation, in slideshow view on your quick analysis your quick access toolbar at the top click the start from beginning button slide one appears in slideshow view press the space bar slide two appears in slideshow view with the morph transition so the title on slide one moves down to the footer Press spacebar five times to display all the bulleted items. And then press the spacebar again to display slide three. Press the spacebar to display slide four. Press the spacebar. The photo on the left appears with the split animation, and then after one second delay, the recently updated OR arrow appears with the wipe animation. Press the space bar. The photo on the right appears, and then after a one second delay, the brand new MRI scanner arrow appears. Press space bar. Slide five appears with only the title, the slogan, and the footer information displayed. Press the space bar five times, watching the pictures move on the screen with the morph transition. Press the space bar and slide 11 briefly appears and then the video fills the screen and plays automatically. When the video is finished, slide 11 appears again with the poster frame you selected of the dog in the center. Press the space bar to display the black slide that appears at the end of a slideshow and then press the space bar once more to return to the normal view. Be sure to save one more time. And then this concludes session two of PowerPoint chapter two. Have a good day.